Good morning and welcome to worship with our uh, after Christmas pajama and carols service. Uh, I hope everyone is uh, wearing something cozy and uh, got a cup of coffee and ready to worship together. Hey, just a side note this morning, I'm going to flip flop the readings this morning. So don't tell uh, Joni who kindly already made the bulletin. We're going to read the gospel first and then our New Testament reading uh, as we get into our sermon. Let's kick off our morning with our gathering song. As we edge toward our new year, I think it's very appropriate that we start with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. So by grace, you have been saved. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. This 
This morning, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And this morning, online and in the chat, uh, you can pass the peace with great enthusiasm, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray together. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act accordingly to your good will, and we may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Holy Gospel comes to us from Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, so we've got Jesus in school and at the temple. He's he's growing in spiritual maturity and knowledge. Who knew Jesus, Jesus had growing to do? This is actually a pretty cool topic as we head into our new year, as many of us make resolutions to grow or, or change as people. But we have to be careful. We can get caught up in measuring or comparing ourselves, obsessing and taking assessment of where we are at and hoping desperately that we are on track with our lives. There are many benchmarks that people use to decide if they are doing good or growing as a a person. There's physical. Uh, How long does it take me to get up off the floor after playing with my kids? Or should I really be puffing after going up a flight of stairs? Uh, Financial. How much money do I have saved? Do I have an emergency fund? What if my basement floods or, or if the furnace breaks? Relational. Do I have friends that I can count on? Friends that actually know what is going on in my life. What about spiritually? How does one measure something as intangible as the internal spiritual condition? How can you measure if you're growing in faith and and becoming more like Jesus? Does it depend on how many Sundays a month you go to church? Does it depend on how much you give to the poor? Or, Or do I have to listen to Christian music like all the time? The author of Colossians gives us some really helpful metrics to help us see if we are growing spiritually more like Jesus. Let us read together a reading from Colossians 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all, 
Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called into the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Okay, so these... These are our metrics. This is how we know if we're growing. We look more and more like Christ, more like Jesus. We, we put on Jesus' clothing. Uh, we're more compassionate, kind, humble, patient. We forgive more. We love more. We're peaceful. We try to seek wisdom. And maybe we have a more grateful heart. Here's what, I, here's what I love is the author doesn't just leave us on our own. Jesus doesn't leave us on our own with this. After Jesus ascended, he gave us some amazing gifts to help us grow. Two big ones that we can talk about today. He gives us the Holy Spirit and the church to help us grow into more loving, joyful, peaceful, kind, faithful, gentle humans. God actually empowers you to grow in these ways. We're, we're not left alone. You don't have to rely on your own strength. God says he will give you the internal Holy Spirit power to grow in your sanctification process. God will also give you a pile of people to grow with. It's called the church. So let's talk about that one for a little bit this morning. Spirituality has a tendency to, to stagnate when isolated. Fruit doesn't grow when it's cut off from the vine. The vine is community. It's the church. It's small groups serving together, sharing meals together, talking about what's going on in each other's lives, sharing each other's burdens. It's, it's being there for another church member, a fellow child of God who, who's going through a tough time. It's letting others take care of you. When you're in need or feeling lost, you get the idea. You need community to grow spiritually. The vine is this place right here. Even if it's online, it's church, it's community. And if you get unplugged from the richness of deep life-giving relationships, you will stagnate your growth process, your spiritual growth process. Because spirituality... It's, it's not meant to be done in a vacuum. How do you know if you're becoming a more loving, gentle, kind, and patient person? You got to have people. <laughs> you got to have people with relational equity in your life that can tell you. You, you got to have feedback. You can't measure your own growth and compassion and kindness and forgiveness and love and peace by yourself. You need to be in community. So this morning, who in your life has that kind of relational equity, the investment of time spent together to, to call you out on your growth as a human being? This is not a light friendship. This isn't an acquaintance. This is, this is someone that you are invested in and that is invested in you for the long haul. This is also the beauty of church. We get to learn to walk, to see, and hear together. Our faith, it's designed to grow with people in community. I graduated college in 1999, and after years of friendship, friendship naturally occurring because of proximity or activities like school classes, I found myself lonely. This happens often in life transitions. We find ourselves in uh, unfamiliar territory, and all of a sudden, just when we need community the most, it can be the hardest to find. After a year of being more isolated than I would like to admit, I realized I had to intentionally start placing myself in pockets of community. Go figure, people didn't just show up at my doorstep. I, I had to make the effort to be a part of groups of people, of community. This is one of the things I admire about my mom. 
She has had uh, two major life changes in the past decade. The death of my stepfather after 25 years of marriage and her own retirement. As with any very large life change, your community alters. But she's always been very good about seeking out ways to engage community. She has a, a lot of energy, and so I think this has to be tailored to the person. But, but my mom joined a, a book club and a bowling league and a new church, and she tutors in English, and she kept reaching out to people around her. So with this example through my life, slowly but surely I began to emerge from my self-cocooned existence after college. I joined a group at church. I made the effort to get together with people. I picked up the phone first, and I felt myself, I felt myself coming back to life again. And I asked a few people to be a part of my inner circle, to, to be friends with the express purpose of helping each other grow. In the book Anam Kara by John Donahue, he talks about friendship as a way of knowing oneself. Even in real life, we can't ever see ourselves completely. But as O'Donohue says, a soul friend is the truest mirror to reflect your soul. The honesty and clarity of true friendship brings out the real contour of your spirit. The Bible says it a different way. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The last couple of years have made this community component of our lives really challenging. We are designed by God to be in community, but I think COVID has unintentionally cocooned many of us. And I think one of our biggest challenges for 2022 to find creative ways to connect with each other in deep and rich ways. I know, I know we are weary with being creative. I know we are nervous of, of what a new variant means for the communities that are so precious to us. But as humans, we are made to be in community with one another. It's okay to feel worry. It's okay to feel burnt out. It's okay to be mad and uh, want to pitch our face masks into the sun and to wonder when the fog will ever lift. But we have to do this together. St. Mark's is an amazing community. We will continue doing small groups, worship, celebrating and caring for one another. And uh, come hell or high water, we're going to have church. We're going to have community. And I think there's a light at the end of this tunnel. There's a new antiviral being tested for COVID right now. And I think we're learning more and more each day how to fight this thing. But we all need to try our best to connect to this amazing gift of community that God gives us. You, you need it for yourself. And I believe wholeheartedly that there are people at church that need you. And God has gifted all of us uniquely to fit into the rich fabric of community called church. Amen.
Let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation that we live in service to you in the natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds and an imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned and struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any need this day. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. As we enter into another another set of rapids in the river of life in terms of COVID and this new variant, God, we ask for those who are dealing with illness, for their healing, their calm, and their comfort. We pray that they are able to make new Christmases, uh, new Christmas memories despite strange circumstances. God, we lift up the medical professionals and ask for their strength and patience. And God, we pray boldly that this starts to wane in the coming months. Prince of Peace, we pray that we can experience true peace on earth. Amen. A few announcements this morning. Our Christmas light show is still rocking. So if you are looking for a COVID safe way to get some instant Christmas cheer, it'll still be running all the way through January 6th. There's new songs, new lights, and it's a super fun blast. So come on out. If you haven't already heard, We are canceling or postponing the pasty bake this year. We believe it to be the safest decision for all involved. And we know, however, that God will continue to give us creative ideas as we move into the new year. Also, this holiday season has been rough for many. And I want you to know that St. Mark's is here for you. So please feel free to reach out to me by phone or email and let me know if you need someone to talk to or someone to pray for you. We also have a wonderful prayer team led by our Stephen minister, Jill Shepard. So please let us know your needs. We do have some needs in terms of our serving teams. If you'd like to learn sound or PowerPoint or or learn a little bit about Alter Guild, you are invited this year to investigate these teams and we'd love to train you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us for the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
And now for our blessing. The God of all hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God.